Thunder! 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 Thunder Geeks are live! Hello, Thunderians! You're listening to 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca. That was J Soul Brothers with Ryuse. And I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. And I'm Alicia. And we're your Thunder Geeks, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. So before we roll into the show, if this is your first time tuning in, every week we're like just a bunch of friends that like to sit down, talk about what we've been up to this week. Sometimes we bring some awesome people into the we're studio. Not friends. <laughs> Don't you love me, Rob? Oh, we're more frenemies. Exactly. We're going to be in constant lock of competition. Mm. Uh. But yeah, we try to make each other laugh for an hour and a half. Uh, we have a really cool guest in the studio this week. We're going to get to her in just a second because I know a lot of you guys are tuning in for a big reason. Last week we had episode 100. I want to thank everyone who tuned in, shared the stream. It is just an overwhelming response that we got, and thank you guys so much. So, the two winners we drew. Uh, first, for the uh, cartoon theme box that we had for the Thunder Box, uh, we had, drumroll please, Sabrina Muirhead. Sabrina, thank you so much. Um, if you want, you can pick it up here at the station tomorrow uh, between 9 and 5 office hours. Uh, and, uh, okay, I guess we had a second winner here as well. So, for the Freedom Thing freedom box oh that thing ran over it is spencer richardson spencer oh spencer's also been a long time listener uh thank you guys so much for your love and support we are just ecstatic to be able to give something back to you we are not done though in fact we are streaming once again on our facebook page facebook.com slash thunder speak share our show post share the stream we are still giving away uh pizzas from eat local uh from the arthur street location we are very grateful to them for uh their gift to us so guys let's roll into it we have a very very special guest her name is uh melanie and she also goes by uh sayomi she has an amazing cosplay page mel say hi to us so hey guys it's been a while it's melanie that was adorable. <laughs> no. So So Mel, uh, we want to know a little bit about you and what what makes you so special here. So <laughs> I, I'm just as an introduction. Um, you know, where are you born from? Okay, so hey guys, so um, I'm born in Thunder Bay, but my, both my parents are from Croatia. So I grew up with immigrant parents. Um, I lived here until I was about 18, and then after I graduated high school, I went on an exchange through Rotary to Thailand for a year, found out I really like languages and traveling. I came back, worked for a year, and decided to go to Japan next, and I moved to Japan. I still live there. I'm actually just back for a couple months. I go back next month, so that's exciting. And yeah. Melanie, I'm curious, how many languages do you know now? Um, I'd say... For um, English, my parents, since they're Croatian, I speak Croatian with them. Uh, I lived in Thailand, so I picked up Thai, and then <laughs> Japanese, I speak pretty fluently, so. I like how you just picked up Thai. You're like, yeah, I just kind of picked, picked it up, up Thai. on the go, you know. <laughs> well, that was more like, I, cause I, for example, I studied French in high school for like seven years, and I speak no French. <laughs> what, what it is, it's, the thing is, I didn't study Thai, though. It's the immersion. Like, I lived with a host family that spoke no English, and like... So you have to learn, like, literally every day was a struggle, and you literally have to pick it up. And then because of that, you, you just kind of roll with it. And there's some words, like, I don't even know what they translate to in English, but I know how to use them because I'm, um, like, just the situation, you know? It's, Cultural it's hard to context. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to explain, but that's how I learn languages. Like, a kid went from, at birth, like, from, like, from childhood, they pick it up with their parents kind of thing. So that's how I learn rather than study. Melanie's one of the most inspiring people that I've no. ever got to meet. Uh, she says she's not. She is. Mel... When did your dream start to go to Japan? Okay, so ever since I was a kid, I was really into anime, and that, like, really pushed me. How young? To to How Japan. young, you think? So, like, I'd say I was influenced right at, like, the age of six, I'd say. Wow. Yeah. So, with that, I'd get really into anime, and then the Japanese music and stuff like that, and the culture and the food, and I was just, like, super into it. And then, actually, in high school, when I went to Thailand, originally, I was applying to go to Japan for exchange. Thailand was my eighth choice. I didn't get Japan. I cried for about a week. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go to Thailand. I ended up loving it. Consider it my second home. And then after that, I was like, you know what? I can do this. I lived with a homestay family. So it was still hard, but I had like a backup. Like my family was there for me there. But going to uh, Japan, the next step was I was by myself. So I 
worked for a year. I did double. I, I did two jobs. I saved and saved and saved. I went to Japan. I got a part time job down there, and like just it worked out. I went to a language school for a year, and this time I'm working hard to go to university. This time. See, this is one of the things that really does inspire me about Mel. Is I look at her work ethic and just her drive and determination, and I am awestruck when i'm feeling like oh man like i am so tired i don't want to go and do anything i've thought like mel works like 17 kabillion jobs at the same time and still manages to fit in like an absurd of ma uh, amount of like anime and other fandoms and just wow it's i need to try harder and i watch how hard you try and it's it's amazing. You're yeah. a perfect example of someone who decides at a young age, I have a dream, I want to try to achieve it, and you're making it come true. It is amazing. Aw, thank you. Well, the thing is, like, when I was in high school, like, growing up with immigrant parents, obviously, like, it's kind of hard. Like, money is always difficult. But then, so when I was in high school, I got a part-time job, and I was like, ah, oh, so hard going to school and working part-time. Like, my life sucks. And then, what, like, as soon as the next step hits and you have, like, another goal of how do you, you feel like it gets harder and harder. So now, like, when I come back, I'm like, oh, two jobs are so hard. Like, I don't have free time. And then you go to Japan, it's like going to school working in a country that you don't speak the language is hard and like now coming back like I'm balancing four jobs but now like so like everything that happened in the past was like nothing now so like every time you take, take that step further and further you feel like you can get farther and farther in your goals kind of thing how many jobs were you working before Thailand so that was uh, two plus like I tutored Japanese on the side but I wasn't like as fluent so it was more beginner Japanese I, I tutored so like that that was pretty hard for me because like I didn't get much time to do things that I wanted to do like see friends and like do all my you know fandom stuff I'm also curious how many are working right now in addition <laughs> to studying because uh, when we got to encounter you we saw you were studying at that moment for the uh, the SATs and I'm just like wow okay I don't want to bug her too much <laughs> I feel bad I see how hard she's working so yeah I have four jobs that time you saw me I was at work I was supposed to work that day I had two hours in between both my jobs so I decided I'll go to work early, study for two hours with my buddies, and then work. So I'm curious, because there's one thing you mentioned before the show, uh, when you came back, that there was a bunch of new terms that you're like, oh, what's that? Like, okay. my shirt, my, my, my famous salty shirt, the warning I give to everyone. Uh, you're saying you weren't actually aware of that at first. Okay, so the thing is, in Japan, I had Japanese friends, so I don't ever speak English except for th with my roommate, and even then we use Thai a lot of the time, because she's my friend that I met in Thailand. And so I was like using Japanese terms and slang a lot of people don't know about and like picking up Japanese. So when my friends came to visit from Japan, like my friends from Thunder Bay, one of them used the term salty and I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> like what is, I literally thought she was like saying, I, I actually don't even know what that could have meant. I'm just like, yeah, okay. Just means you're kind of a little bit sassy. Well, I, I know now. I think I think I know now because like I hear it enough and like. That's like, good because I'm still not quite sure. Like, at first, at first when this when this slang came out for salty, I was just like, yeah, that's so me because like I love salt and I'm just salty. I was like <laughs> thinking about like how much salt I use on everything. I'm like, oh, that's not what that means. Okay. I, yeah, I didn't know if it was a negative or a positive thing. So when someone's like, Melanie, stop being so salty. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Was there any other new terms that we invented while you were gone that you came back? You're like, what the heck happened 2015? Like, well, things like fam and then, like, I got fam. I assumed it was like family. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, lit people be like, man, this fam is so lit. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I was just so, like, thrown, like, blown away. Like, now that, now that I'm back, I'm picking up on a bunch of new words. But, like, now they're getting old. I feel like no one uses those words anymore. So, you're like, dang it, I just learned these ones. <laughs> like, there's words I've pick up and like at work sometimes I catch myself using those words like when like I make a mistake or like something like just surprises me I use those words and people are like what language was that, so <laughs> that, that that's where I like my slang comes in so I mean going to Thailand as well was a really big experience what were some of the things that you did in your free time in Thailand <laughs> clubbing <laughs> don't tell my host family because I wasn't allowed to but um no like my free time I I my biggest suggestion going abroad make friends from that country they will be like your family your support system um so what i did was i'd hang out with those friends and then i had two friends that were also exchange students who are like family to me they live in different parts of the world but like we all meet up every year like we met up this year in japan last year was in canada like just like for me it's not buying things it's not 
going places it's being with those people making those friends like that those are some of the best memories I've ever made and I'm only 21 like I feel like even though I feel like my sometimes life is hard but like so is everyone else's you don't want to ever compare but like having those friends is like the best feeling in the world I, I can completely relate it's one of those things when you make connections with other people they go out of their way to help boost you up and then you're motivated to help someone else and just reach a hand out and just makes people more connected it feels really good yeah, like i think i mentioned to you guys earlier when we were off show but um when i was in japan i was really struggling for money because i didn't get a job right away and like the things were just getting really hard and my friend that came to visit it visit me she lent me a bunch of money and like she knew i would pay her back i've never not paid someone back and like just just today she's like happy birthday even though it's not my birthday for a while and i'm like <laughs> no no you can't do this i literally started crying she's like no you, someone needs to like you need to catch a break once in a while so I was yeah I'm curious were there any big culture shocks uh, other than just language when you oh came back to Thunder Bay oh my god yes yeah. so I mean you're talking about back from like Thailand or Japan Thailand Thailand we're gonna move to Japan soon Thailand is um not as much I feel like Japan's crazier in the sense of that but like the uh, thing is, um, in Thailand, everybody's late all the time. If the meeting's at 7 o'clock or the party's at 7 o'clock, everyone's there early at 7.30. So for me, I, I am never on time for anything anymore now. Like, But luckily, my work, they're so chill, most of them. And like they're like, I, I obviously, I try to be professional. I always, I'm always on time, but I'm never like 30 minutes early anymore. I'm like, just barely make it kind of thing. You just dropped an amazing truth bomb on me. I think I was supposed to be born Thai. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I am, fu- I'm always saying I'm five minutes late to life because yeah. I'm usually five minutes late to everything. As much as I try and plan, it just, it's a comedic series of events. But with Thai, uh, Thailand, I could show up 30 minutes late, but I'd still be cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you nice. Were, you, were, you were literally early. Um, well, I'm going to need a little, uh, you to tutor me in Thai. That's apparently where my dream destination was all the, all along and I never even knew. Yeah, no, actually, a friend of mine just went to Thailand, and she, I tutored her for a bit in, when we were working. She's one of my workmates. Is that the word, workmates? Is that what you I think say? so. Colleagues? I don't know. Sure. Co-worker. Co-worker. There you go. I can't English anymore, guys. No, but she's, <laughs> she's there right now. I taught her a bunch of stuff, so and I teach people at my work words and stuff like that. So, yeah, they enjoy that. Uh, so... I have a couple questions now. Yeah, okay. we're really curious about uh, Japan. So oh one thing, one thing I want to know before you went to Japan, though, you did go back to Thailand. Yes, I. It was like a two hundred dollar ticket, so I was like, I might as well do this. Best choice ever. I saw my family there, my homestay family. They brought me <coughs> back to their home, just like I was like never gone. I stayed there the entire time. We went out together. We had dinner together as a family. Like, and my friends that I lived with down there were there with me, and just. It was the best feeling in the world to go back and realize, like, yeah, this is my other home. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, we know kind of why you were inspired to go to Japan, but what specifically did you go there to do? For me, it was to learn the language. I realized that because of a knack for languages, I wanted to do something with that. I remember on the way way back from Thailand, I got stuck at the airport because I was helping a Japanese guy with the, like, the airport pe- airport people? <laughs> yeah, airport people, because they needed a translator to tell him that he missed his flight. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to miss my flight and help them. And I realized then and there, I love translating. Like, So my goal right now, it probably won't happen, but I, I want to make that my goal regardless, is to work for the UN as a translator. So like, because I feel like having a person that speaks four different languages rather than four different people that speak each of those languages is more beneficial. And plus, like, it just I love being able to communicate with someone Using a language that's not your first. Like my one of my best friends in Japan is Korean, and he speaks Japanese. He doesn't speak English, and we speak through Japanese. That is an interesting dynamic, especially when you don't speak each other's home language, but it's a different culture and a different language that connects you to exactly. All. So specifically, what what were you studying in Japan there? Like, was it like a university? Was it a college? Like, what oh. is it exactly? Or as best you can. So I went to KCP International Language School. It's a Japanese language school that um, uh, from like kids from all over the world. I did an American uh, language program, so I came through it doing like um, like the Japanese language study. There was a culture class that I didn't go to ever because I'm a bad student. Um, <laughs> but like, because I already I already knew the culture pretty well. These were people who like knew nothing about Japan. Like, just they were just like going through it because they needed to pick up a credit. So they went there. They took the language course. So I. Um, I knew a little bit of Japanese before going. Like I said, I tutored beginners Japanese. I could hold up a mild conversation, but like just a basic thing. And now I'm pretty fluent. Like I, I work in Japan. I work at Hooters, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have a server there. And like, 
my my goal was to learn the language, and I learned it in less than a year. So I, I gotta know. Japanese Hooters, what's that like? <laughs> it's very different than American Hooters. Like, when I saw it, I'm like, let's go to Hooters, guys. I just <laughs> saw it. I'm like, let's go eat there. So I went there. It was so much fun. Like, the girls are so fun and, like, like, like with ganky, like, exciting and, like, excited. And, like, the the image there was, like, it was, like, a sports bar, but, like, all kinds of people. There were, like, couples in their first dates, kids' birthday parties, big, like, like there was, like, girls' birthday parties, like, like work parties. Like, it wasn't just, like, the typical, like, you see, like, men at a sports bar kind of thing, which that image there kind of is, but it, it wasn't. Like, it was, like, a family restaurant. Like, in Japanese, it's, like, we literally... It's just, more like an Applebee's? Yeah, there is, like, an Applebee's <laughs> with cute girls in little Hooters uniforms. That's literally what it is. So, Applebee's... No. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> So I'm curious because you, you've been a server here as well. How does it compare? Wow. Because from my understanding in Japan, it's actually rude to tip people. Yeah. And that's kind of the custom why people would go to Hooters or people would work there because they can earn more tips. So the, the logic behind that in Japan, the reason we don't tip, um, there's like a bunch of things behind it. The main one in recent years has been because when you go to Japan, I don't know what you guys have yet to go, right? But if you ever go one day, you'll notice when you go to a restaurant, your server comes, takes your order, that's it. And then when the food's out, they bring it. There's no like, how's your food? Did you want a glass of water? Like, did you want anything else? There's none of that. You're not getting that service. Therefore, there's no need to tip. Um, and if because if you tip on top of that, they're like, why are you tipping me? Am I not doing a good job? Like, what's the problem? Like, they, they think you're looking down on them. But like, because they're not giving you that service. But at Hooters, it's an American restaurant. So we have that service of like, hi, I'll be your server tonight. Like, did you want a drink? Like, how's your food? Did you need anything else? So we did get tips. People, um, um, It's slowly growing in Japan because of that. So like Japanese people, I got tips from often. Foreigners would always tip me. Like, they, they're like, hey, you're a foreigner. We're foreigners. We know tipping culture. So that was a thing. And, uh... Yeah, but because it was also an American restaurant, we gave that service, and people don't always tip. Our wage was a little higher, so it translated to about, or converted to about $20 an hour. Whoa! But it it is busy. It's so busy. Like, the worth ethic in Japan, even though, like, when you have young people working here at a restaurant, you don't really see that much motivation. But, like, in Japan, it's super, super strict. Like, work, even though it's part-time, you have to be on time. You have to be professional. Even if you're talking to a customer that's your friend, like, you have to still be professional. Like, with my bosses, um, I have to call them by, like, the honorific at the end, like, saying, like, the last name. For example, my boss is Nabe-san. It's Nabe, but Ayusan and Yoshi. Uh, Yoshi san, I wouldn't say Yoshi. I did it once, made that mistake, and I got in trouble. Oh. So we joke around though. It doesn't matter what honorific it is. If you're like, if you're kind of close, I use the honorific Pyon, which is the sound a bunny makes. He called me Mera Pyon, and I call him Yoshi Pyon. So which is really cute. But like the one time I forgot it, they're like, Melanie, know your place. I'm like, uh oh. Whoopsie. But yeah, they're very professional. So. Okay, so I love when you update your Instagram and everything. (laughs) And one thing I remember is that you said you almost had a job as a model. And I'm wondering, like, how that came about and, like, what went into that? Okay, so the thing is, in Japan, it's really easy for a foreigner to be a model, depending, um, unfortunately, on your body type and your, like, your your facial features. Because I'm European, my face caught to a lot of people rather than, like, a typical American. Um, Also, though, uh, for me, um, I guess... I spoke Japanese, so when people like approached me and they saw I spoke Japanese, they, they're like, oh, this would be a really good opportunity. It's hard to find a foreigner who we consider good model material and speaks the language. And for me, I did modeling for a hair salon. Um, so all that was, like, I didn't get paid in cash. I got paid in, like, free hair stuff. So, like, I got a $250 straight perm for free. I got my nice. hair, like, cut and everything. And she's really sweet, the girl who does it. It's in a little hair, hair salon in Harajuku. No, in Omotesando. Sorry, in Omotesando. And, yeah, I got a lot, a lot of other people, but, like, you never know if it's, like, legit or not. Apparently, it's a thing in Japan. Um, there's a lot of male hairdressers, and not all of them are the actual hairdresser. They're, like, the assistant. They will approach you in an attempt to hit on you, thinking, like, <laughs> they will actually, they will cut your hair and do your hair, but it's not, like, an actual modeling job, but they'll do your hair for free. And then they'll, it's the approach, like, they'll get closer and closer, and eventually they'll ask you out kind of thing. So that's something you have to avoid. So because this was, I don't want to say it be, sound, like, sound sexist, but because it's Japan, though, because it was a girl, I felt a little bit more comfortable taking it. And, like, she lived in the part of town I lived in, and we met in 7-Eleven. <laughs> so <laughs> she's like, she's like, do you model for me? I'm like, what? <laughs> what? I just got off work, and I look nasty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's It's just one of those amazing, like... Mel, you're like the main character of an anime to <laughs> no. us. It, it's it's amazing. It's like I went to Seven Eleven and when I got off work, I was all sweaty. And she's like, "Please bottle for us." <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it started. My anime. Just kidding. 
And also, it seemed like you were ending up on TV quite a bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mel is the most famous person we know. <laughs> no. So there's a show called You and Nanashi Nippon, which is like, what are you doing in Japan? So when I first got there, I was on it twice. But I spoke like no Japanese and I was panicked because I never used it. So I messed up. There's another time when I was on it, I was outside. They're like, do you speak Japanese? Do you want to be interviewed? I'm like, yeah, okay. So they just asked me about like my favorite kanji in Japanese, like the writing, or like what it's like to learn Japanese, what I'm doing here. And I think I was on it again. I was, yeah. I just don't remember why. I was like on TV four times. <laughs> <laughs> See, you should have done what is my potential goal when I get there. I will get there. And that is to work your way onto a Super Sentai set. That's too hard. I'd actually, oh, oh, but I, sorry, I oh. did get an amazing opportunity though. I worked because at, Hoot, at Hooters, it's a big venue, right? So we had a, um, a reservation for a big company. And it was a bunch of anime companies, like directors, voice actors, and everything. And I met a bunch of voice actors. Like, I met the voice actor for Amai from Yu-Gi-Oh! Who does the voices in Naruto and such. I met voice actors from Diana Ace. I met voice actors from Gurren Lagann. I met the, like, the... So there's the, the manga from Naruto. I met the person in charge of editing it. Like, he's the one who looks over the storyboard and edits it and cuts things out and stuff. I met him. So, like, I just took pictures of them. I shook their hands. They, like, cried. One of the voice actors told me straight up he's like you have a really good like radio voice and we don't meet many people who speak both English and Japanese because you know when you watch anime there's always that English there's like the English speaking section but it doesn't sound very like legit English they're like, yeah they're like you could do that and it wouldn't sound like English and I'm like wow so they offered me a job but I'm like I can't take this because I work at Hooters and I'm in Japan and I can't risk losing my job because you can't communicate with customers outside of work in Japan really oh well maybe I think that's just a Hooters thing though because it's very yeah. like it's probably to protect the girls more yeah. than anything else. Yeah, because it's very there's a, there's a high stock ratio. I, I guess, and <laughs> since you met them there, it does make it a little. Yeah, it's not that it's an inappropriate thing. You just like they don't want um, like if I for some reason get this job and get like um like a position there, I'll be known as the one who worked at Hooters, and they don't want like your identity coming up from Hooters. Like, it's like you have to hide it, but you can't just be like, guess what, guys, I work here like out loud kind of thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I, I can definitely understand, like, yeah. that perspective. Like I've had my fair share of stalkers in Japan, not going to lie. Like, it was creepy. Ooh. I, wow. I had a model stalk me. Like, I did not know he was a model until, like, like because he was one of my customers once, and, like, he was showing me all this stuff, and like, holy crap, I know who you are. <laughs> uh, not going to go and say who it is, though, but, like, that kind of scared me because he was with his buddy, and they're like, come drinking at our apartment. Come on, come on. I'm like, no, guys, stop. I am actually curious to dive a little more into that, but I want to head to our first break here, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in to Thunder Geeks on 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca. We'll be right back. Yeah. And we're back. You're listening to 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca. That was one OK Rock with Dreamer. And of course, we are back in the studio here with our very special guest, Melanie. Hey, guys. Yay. I'm back. So happy to have you. So before the break, you were telling us that you actually had a stalker, a model stalker. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so was he really cute? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do you? S oh man! I'd see, my problem with if I got a stalker, I'd be like, "Oh hi, hey, thank you," and then I'd start stalking them back. I uh, the thing is though, I have a boyfriend. Fair, so you don't want a stalker at all. No. Also, like with that kind of tendency, I don't think you want to date that kind of person anyway. Fair, fair. They they might be a little obsessive and clingy. Um, was that a common issue you had to deal with, or so mostly what it was? It wasn't like typical like they'd stalk me every night kind of thing. It was more like um. I get off the train and I'd be like, "This guy's following me," and I'd test it out and I go into different convenience stores and I'd be like, "Oh my god, they are!" So then, like, I it was usually in my area of town, so I knew it really well, so I knew where to go. There's actually this one time I was at the convenience store printing off some papers, and I was like, "Oh my god, this there's a person behind me taking photos of me," and I was like, I, I went up to the person at the front and I told her, she's like, "Oh my god, yeah, no, I'll take care of it," and then I went back and then she went to go get the manager, but the guy was still there. The manager came down and the guy saw and he ran out. And I was like, okay, well, okay, he's gone now. And then he comes back, I noticed. I was like, oh, my God. So then I tell the girl again. She's like, no, he's actually back. And then he, the manager comes again, and he leaves. So then after about 20 minutes, I finally figured out how to print all my stuff because, like, I needed to download an app for it because I didn't have a USB, and it was confusing. And then I go outside, and, oh, my God, the guy was standing there. He was standing oh, there. Oh, Jesus. And so I run back inside. Yeah. The manager comes down. He's like, well, I walk you to the police station because we need to get you home, and this guy is following you. So I go to the station. I tell the police, and they're like, we can't really do anything about it. It's a common thing in Japan. So unless they physically do something to you, we can't do anything about it. I'm like, well, that's very comforting. So the 
but the police officer walked me halfway home and then he was like oh you speak japanese i'm like can this not be the conversation right now like <laughs> like like i'm flattered that you you're very impressed but like i'm getting creepers stalked and watched and photos taken of me and like being a foreigner who spoke Japanese, not even that, like, because I, in Japan, girls dress up. So, like, I was always used to, like, wearing makeup and, like, dressing up a little bit, like, like rather than... It's part of our culture. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, so I'm used to that. So to them, I guess, seeing a foreigner all dressed up who speaks Japanese is, like, mind-blowing. And, like... You're, like, a holy grail just, you know, passing <laughs> I wouldn't by. I would say that. Like, and they're, like, ooh. But, like, it just... It's, it's weird. And, like, the thing in Japan, though, is phones don't... They, phones aren't allowed to not have a shutter sound. Like, you can't... Fix that. Like my phone that I bought in Japan has a shutter sound because I'm, um it's like a th- upskirt photos is a thing. Like I got I was on the escalator and this guy was trying to take a photo of my skirt and I noticed oh, and I turned around and I freaked out on him in Japanese because he probably thought like I didn't speak Japanese so I was gonna be all f- like like flustered and like oh what do I do? But I was like nani shite yo baka yo It was just like <laughs> face like. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, I tried to bleep myself there. Sorry guys. But like. But yeah, no, you freaked out on him and it was. I mean, that's a. That, that's a scary proposition yeah. to do. Like, how did he react? He ran away. He bolted it. I'm supposed to, <laughs> at, that, at that point, you're supposed to tell the, like, the people at the station. But, like, he was gone. I couldn't, they couldn't do anything about it. So that scared me because I'm like, what? I didn't know if he actually stepped a photo or not because, like, I didn't hear the sound. But I know your phone has to have the sound. Have to have the sound. But I saw him doing it. I was like, are you kidding me right now, buddy? And he was young, too. Like, it wasn't an old guy. It was, like, he's probably in his mid-20s. Yeah, no, that is that is horrifying. I never knew that about you know Japanese phones that they have to have the shutter they sound do, on. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense, and it's almost disappointing that it has to. <coughs> well, the thing is, in Japan, it's really safe, like to walk around at night and like like go out places. Like I'm scared to walk around, not gonna lie, in Thunder Bay by myself. Yeah, same. And I, like even in other parts of Canada and America, in Japan, I'd walk home. I'd walk. I'd go for a walk at three in the morning and not feel scared at all because the, the 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 crime there is very low. But it's the thing, like the. The like, for example, on the train when it's crowded is mm-hmm. when you're gonna get hit by that creeper. Cause like you can't tell who it is. Like when I'm on a packed train, I've had people try to feel me up, and I like straight up, I'm like, move your hand or before I punch you in the face. Like you know, <laughs> so that actually like, is a thing. Cause before the show, we were, we're wondering, is, is like, what is it like riding a oh, train it's in insane. Japan? Like it's not always packed, but like at night during the last train and the first train are insanely packed. Like I am literally, I made friends with these two girls because I was really squished up to her face, and we're like, hey. I speak Japanese, want to be friends? And they're like, oh, cool. So, like, I just, like, that kind of thing is cool. But, like, the the creepers, the, and especially at night when people are drunk and stuff like that, they're not, they're less scared to do things. Yeah. So that's the only thing you got to be scared of, the bigger crowds of people when you're by yourself, like, on a train or something. But, like, because girls won't yell for help. They won't say anything. So they let it happen. Whereas they think I'm the same way. But I'm like, no, I'm a foreigner, man. I'm going to scream at you. You touch me, I'm going to punch you back. Like, that's... In all honesty, that's probably a great thing that you did that as scary as it is because they're going to be afraid the next time because yeah. they tried to go after someone and she reacted and she didn't just take it. She flipped on them and they're expecting a flying judo kick to their face at this point. Yeah. So they're running away. But there's been a couple times where it like threw me off at first. Like there's this one time this guy completely open trained me. And my friends were on our way to go clubbing. We were all dressed up in cute black clothes, makeup, nothing super revealing. This guy sits beside me, slowly starts, literally, there's like 500 seats. He p- slowly puts his hand underneath my leg. Oh, and I yeah. slap away. I get up. I grab my friends. We just move. I didn't say anything because I was like scared. He was drunk. I didn't want to like, when they're drunk, you don't know how they're going to react. So you just kind of leave. But when they're sober, it's like, you want to fight me? Like, come on. I'm bigger than you. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. I noticed when you get like kind of heated, you said the word "buddy." Like that's Canadian slang for like oh, "buddy." How does that? I trans- say I say "a" all the time too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. But I want to know like. How, does that translate into Japanese at all? Like when you like when buddy. you're cuss, when you're cussing us someone out, do you just like kind of like buddy mid sentence, or do you use a different word? We don't really use like like if you're saying like "Hey you," you would say something like uh, "kimi," but like or like. I think like, I think what she was asking is is do any of your Canadian culturalisms come out in your Japanese, or is it more oh, yeah. you're mirroring? Oh, oh <laughs> no, no, I'm oh, curious. I'm Canadian, curious about that. Oh, yeah. so I, I, exactly. Um, oh yeah. So, not, like, the direct words, but, like, the fact that I, I use A all the time, like, more than a regular Canadian, I find. And that, there's a word for that in Japanese. I'd say it'd be ne. So, I, like, I always use the word ne, which a lot of girls use because it's very cutesy. But because I'm used to using A, I'm used to using ne. So, I'd be, like, like... Should all Canadians adopt that? Yeah. Just when we go no. over, we're going to start saying ne. Ne. <laughs> ne. ne. Or, like, disho, which is, like, the same as ne, but, like, more like saying right. So, we're kind of, like... 
like uh that's good eh like that kind of thing like you yeah you say, hey, it's the same thing with japanese it, it's something that we got to discuss with uh, one of our other guests that did a documentary on being canadian where i think the reason we speak like that is it's we get to make statements but also disarm them so people don't feel like tax it was like this is what i think right <laughs> yeah exactly like in japan though like because we use that we express ourselves using those things like it's also a way of saying we're listening like if you're just talking to someone they're like yeah yeah it's kind of like oh it's kind of rude you're not really listening but saying the a thing it's the same in japanese that we when they're talking you're kind of like ah so and like that kind of thing so so we had a couple questions from the stream here Yay. um uh shayla moore asked uh how is fashion different in japan from canada so different everyone just is so nice like oh i miss it like boys like my boyfriend just is so much nicer than me like he just is like a model like my friends here think he's a model it's so funny can you give fashion tips to guys in canada so we can look better because i mean me and rob we, we just like t-shirt jeans that's the thing. Hey, a lot of guys in canada a lot of guys in canada are scared of the ter- scared scared of the stereotype of being considered gay but like in japan that's not a thing it's just like you dress nice because the nicer you dress the more attractive you are to like to yours as like a person and like like it shows that you care like in japan you take care of yourself is in a way to show that you care like i wouldn't say like weight or anything like that is an issue it's just like the way you like dress yourself yeah like if you care enough to dress yourself that's considered like you're like you've got your life together kind of thing if that makes sense but like everyone dresses nicely it's like the fashion like tokyo is like the fashion capital of japan like anywhere you go people dress nice so if i go there pack suits because like suits yeah, yeah like, actually oh, so like I think suit and tie oh yeah no like that's fine like everyone's a salary man there they all wear suits and ties, suits and ties. <laughs> but do you have any other fashion tips for people who travel over there especially guys because we dress terribly don't wear sweats. Nobody wears sweats. Nobody anymore. wears sweats. Don't wear... Hey, I think that applies to everyone. Don't wear sweats outside. <laughs> okay, well, like, don't be afraid to accessorize either. Like, wear a hat. Wear, like, like a, wear, like, a side sash or, like, a bag thingy. Like, wear jewelry. Wear piercings. Like, no one's going to judge you. Everyone's going to think you look hot. Like, who cares? Like, you're a babe, you know? Aww. Work that. Yeah. Uh, we had another question from uh, Shayla here, and uh, it was, what is a Japanese diet? And I'm curious about that as well, because you did mention body oh, types. Okay. What is it like being on a diet in Japan? Because I've heard some things, but I'm curious for someone who has, you know, first-hand experience so, living in the culture. Regarding food, all people eat rice. I eat rice for every meal, pretty much. Like, that's the staple. That is the That stereotype is real. Um, Japanese people... Okay, this is really kind of upsetting in a way. Japanese girls... Their way of dieting is not exercise because exercising is considered building muscle and they don't want muscle. They want to look frail and cute, which is like I know for sure. Like the girls I worked with at Hooters, I remember one time I offered one of them a piece of chocolate. It was organic, vegan, low sugar, like no fat, literally a small piece. Like there was maybe negative one calories in that. And she's straight up, she's like, no, I'm on a diet. I'm like, oh, so what'd you eat today? She's like, I had a banana yesterday. And I'm like, hold on, I was like, hold on. She's like, it's summer season. You have to diet. I'm like, that's not dieting them. Sorry, hon, but that's cold. I'm pretty sure that kind of links to anorexia, does it not? She's like, well, it's different. Like, we just, we don't, like, throw up or anything. We just don't eat. Like, it's not a big deal. And I'm like, oh, my God. No. And I was like, is that all of you? She's like, yeah. All, and, like, they all started talking to me about it. They're like, yeah, we eat, like, we usually, like, just do fruit juices and stuff like that. Or, like, vegetable juices. And, like, sometimes we eat bananas. I'm like, oh, my God, hon, you're going to starve yourself. She's like, well, yeah, it's just for summer season, just to look skinnier. Like, when the winter hits, like, we can go back to our normal diets. But, like, for summer, we need to look really good in our bathing suits. I'm like, that's not okay. But the thing is, guys expect that. And not all of them. I'm not stereotyping. But, like, it's, every it's a girl, like, yeah, every girl I've asked, every person I've asked, because I wanted to make sure this was a thing and not just, like, the girls I worked with. Yeah. But, like, my friends from school, like, even, like, the not Japanese students, like, a lot of the kids from asian culture typically diet by not eating and like because that's the best way to lose weight but then as soon as they eat again they don't realize they'll gain it again they'll gain it again because they never they consecutively like if they stop eating and they start eating again they'll eat like one or two bananas they barely eat as a hetero guy ladies don't do this we don't want toothpicks like i'm I'm not saying like gorge but Proper diet and exercise are a very important thing. Proper diet and exercise, uh, proper diet and exercise is more attractive than anything else because it shows somebody I know how to take care of myself. I know how to take care of my body. One thing that worries me as well is because I know when people starve themselves, it doesn't just affect their body; it affects their emotional state as well. And I, oh yeah, I'm worried about you know how people can get depressed like that. Um. So the thing is, uh. It is really upsetting because, like, I was pretty happy with my weight. Like, I'm 169 centimeters. I don't know what that is in inches. You're beautiful. And, like, I'm I'm 128 pounds. I think 125 now. 
I'm considered fat in Japan where I work. And that's crazy. That like I considerably I'm a normal body weight here, pretty thin. But in Japan, like the, my you're coworkers, in great shape. Well, thank you. But like the thing is, the girls in Japan they're not scared. To, they will seriously like if you said like, hey, are you getting weight or like they they literally some girls would squeeze my fat. Be like, someone's getting chunky. Oh, if, if you did that here, yeah. that's considered like straight up like people would punch it's, you in the face. Yeah, like, they tell you shut up. But in Japan, girls do that all the time. And like I remember, I got so depressed. Like even <coughs> now, I still think I'm fat. Like living in Japan, like really no. hit me. Like no, I know, no, I know no, that. No. Like yeah, I okay. I don't starve myself. Like I eat still like with my vegan diet too. Like that really helps like because i can still eat a lot and keep the calories low and mm-hmm. like feel good about myself but then like living in that culture is gonna affect it's hard you. yeah even my boss was saying like melanie watch out a little bit you're getting weight you're kind of just at that point where you're we need to teach enough. you that judo kick so you guys go wham i love food this is what food does it makes me kick you in the face see this is making more sense now because one of my favorite manga is fushiki yugi and when you go through the manga there's usually little like character descriptions and for miyaka it says oh she's 108 pounds a little on the chubby side and i never understood that that also means that like she's probably really short too, and so there's a certain amount. Like for example, they do it by kilos on there. So I'm like uh, 55 kilos, or I was. I don't know if I think I'm still the same. But um, for in Japan, a girl considerably a little bit shorter than me to be if, for a girl my height. If I hit 60 kilos, I'm considered fat. So that's why I'm considered chubby. Where I am right now is chubby. That's so crazy. It blows my mind. And like my my boyfriend's like, you're not fat. Just don't worry. Like, but. When you're surrounded by Japanese girls who are constantly worried about their looks, you start getting that. Like, when they don't... Because girls wear makeup all the time. They're like, when when my friends ask me, they're like, so has your boyfriend seen you without makeup yet? And I'm like, what? Do you, like, wear makeup to bed or something? That's like, they you- legitimately, they wake up earlier than their boyfriends and do their makeup. Whoa! It's a okay. thing. It's legitimately a thing. So, when I go to Japan, I'm going to have to learn, like complimentary phrases for everyone because it sounds like japan is in dire need of hugs and compliments yeah just that can be our goal as canadians we, we just need to learn like, all the nice phrases and we just go you look fantastic well, today i don't think it's a negative thing i think they just take pride in what they're doing and they just work really hard to show that they're like you know yeah, it's, it's, and it's, it's their it's their characteristics of beauty like thin like white like very pale like frail like whereas here it's like Bon qui bon is what we call it. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> bon qui bon. So it's it's uh like the the boobs, the th- like the kind of thin waist, the hips and the butt type. Hourglass. Thing. Like I have a friend like that. She's super thin. She's thinner than me. Her stomach. She's like she's got a flat stomach. She, like a, like a, she's not like a Nicki Minaj butt going on. She's got the booty. boobs. Like she is like if she was here, she'd be considered like a like perfect like magazine model for like those hot car babes but she was told by my manager that she is getting fat and needs to lose weight because boobs and butt is not a big thing in japan oh and that's that kind of stuff is like sometimes that's like biologically impossible yeah, to she's get half, rid of she's half she's half american half japanese so she's that's why she's got the thinness of a japanese but the the bon bon of uh, an american yeah and the, the, all bodies are beautiful yeah <laughs> yeah respect <laughs> Uh, we had another question from Elizabeth Apple. Uh, what area did you like hanging out most in? Shibuya! Why? Shibuya, nanka. Ah, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> Japanese worries. came out. Um, I love nightlife. Like, I love liveliness. I love knowing the world's awake, you know, like, at all times. In Shibuya, there's so much to do. There's people everywhere. It's never quiet. Like, it just, it's exciting and you're having fun. There's places to drink. Uh, Karaoke is amazing down there. Like, it's just bright and fun and, like, you just feel happy. Like, that for me is really fun and like cl- like I used to go clubbing a lot not as much anymore but like that was fun for me like just there's always something to do there and like I could be like hey let's go to Shibuya tonight guys and like we could stay out all night till 6 in the morning like clubs and bars here close at like 2 stop serving alcohol yeah. Japan is like 5am so you're out and about having fun the city stays alive all night oh yeah and it's like and in Shibuya it's all the young people all the people dressing nice like you just feel like you fit in you know there's a crowd of like fun young people who and you meet so many people too I've met made so many friends just walking in the street and people be like hey want to take our photo like hey want to hang out and like yeah why not you know let's do it okay i have uh one more question here from uh shayla moore uh i'm gonna butcher this word is a kotatsu used all year round or only kotatsu. during the winter months uh, kotatsu okay uh, first off what is a kotatsu because i have no idea so kotatsu, ah. kotatsu, so a kotatsu is like a table with like a blanket kind of built into it and it's got a heater system underneath Ooh, so, it can war- toast your buns <laughs> yeah so like when you're in the living room watching tv people usually have a pillow they sit on and they put the blanket over them and their legs are warm and because japanese houses aren't like they don't have like um heaters it's not yeah like, it's like an air conditioner in the summer turns into a heater during the winter so it's not like a heating system like around your house mm-hmm. so that's typically used to stay warm and that's usually an, um depends like so 
in the winter it's common for families but they're always at their love hotels <laughs> i'm not gonna tell you why i know that so they have about love hotels um depending on the theme of the room you get if you get a japanese style room and then there also are like um a lot of like like just hostels and stuff like if you go to a very old like old school japanese one like i went to hakone which is like a hot spring city which is very 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 like old school japanese and they had one in the room is it like 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 one of those huge baths Oh, yeah, like, you know, the hot, yeah, the hot spring is, yeah, like, the baths, like, the onsen, and those are insane, Japanese people are insane, like, in manga, like, I read some pretty yaoi stuff, and, like, there's always, like, these scenes of things going on in those, like, tubs. Yeah, I'd love to go. But no, that never, (laughs) I lasted 10 minutes just sitting in one, I don't know how anime characters do anything in there. Or is it, like, too hot, or? It's too hot, like, I was dying, I was like, my skin's boiling, my boyfriend's like, it's fine, I'm like, Japanese people are crazy. Yeah, but you throw him here in the middle of January, let's see how long they last. Oh, exactly, exactly, yeah. See, me, I, I'm more, uh, I love the warm weather, and I Same. love tropical, so I would, I've uh, I've always wanted to go to one of those, just I'm like, that looks like the most amazing bath ever. I don't have a bathtub myself, so I just want one I could submerge my entire body in. Also, very good news to anyone who has a tattoo in Japanese culture, and like in Japan, it's seen as a negative thing to have a tattoo and you can't enter the onsen the hot spring with the olympics coming up japanese people are making it like easier for foreigners to come and they want that to be a big thing to be able to be experienced but foreigners have tattoos so they remove that lot foreigners can now enter a hot spring at least 90 yes, percent of the time i'm sure there's gonna be some places with old people that are like no no dirty tradition tattoo people like like i had a tattoo and i got in just fine nice yeah i, I was actually excited for a sec because like sweet i'm the only clean one well, I guess Leisha too. Well, I mean, Leisha, I, I guess if you want to come. Secretly. But... No, oh, please. Yeah. You know it's just about me and Andrew going to be naked in a big puddle of water. No, essentially. Yeah. We just want to splash around. Uh, Leisha, actually, did we have a question about the Love Hotels? Uh-oh. Uh, well, I had a question because I've seen a couple of videos online. They kind of like debunk what people think Love Hotels are. So have you... Have for, you... Oh, for, for any of our listeners uninitiated, yeah. what is a Love Hotel? So a love hotel is essentially like um, it's a uh, it's a like a hotel or a motel kind of thing you pay for it by the hour. So some people actually do use it um, to like go s- just rent it f- to sleep before work. Like when they're traveling, it's a cheap place to go. You, it's actually um, there's a, a thing where you can enter with more than two people of the same gender. Um, you can't like you can't go in with a girl. You so we and Rob can't go. No, you can't. They will literally because they they think you guys are gay and they won't want you to come in. So I tried to go in with a couple of friends once just to sleep somewhere. There was like three of us, three guys and me, and they're like, we don't know what's gonna go on with you four guys. No, <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay, but um, but essentially it is used for one night stands. I'm surprised that that's even an issue considering the business they're in it's like hey they're still gonna pay you by the hour that's the thing but it's just it's still it's it's just a cultural thing yeah that's unfortunate Sad. because if you want to go to if you want to go to an actual gay level tell they have them and oh okay. they, 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 it's there's like, specialization yeah and like was it shinjuku nichomikana so that's where me and rob have to go uh, yes <laughs> yes well i love hotels on the bucket list and yeah <coughs> they're they're very cool a lot of them they're some of them can be pricey some others not as it's literally typically you know it's a love hotel if it says like because usually a regular hotel it's like $75 for a night a love hotel is like like $20 an hour it's like oh (laughs) I know what you do here so are they like themed like they show in like TVs and everything or is it just generic usually they're themed but there's some generic things as well so like it, it, it all depends what are some of the themes I'm curious um there's like full-on like japanese style ones there's other ones where it's like 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 a like super like there's a heart bed and like flowers and roses there's like a bunch of different kinds like anything you can think of there's typically one of those so just just to clarify because i've been wanting this one is there a space theme one i've yet to see one so i can't answer <sighs> that well, well, what kind we of space theme? Because there's several types of space. So, I mean, are you looking for, like, Neil Armstrong astronaut? Are you I'm looking, looking for, for, like, stars on the sky. We get to wear astronaut suits. Okay, that, I don't know. Maybe. You have to go to, like, <laughs> some weird part of Japan. Yeah, me, I want James Cameron aliens. So, like, xenomorph walls. So, they're all black and scaly and slimy. Yes. I, th- I think that's the one we should go for. There can be, like, pods on the ground. Like, you're... you're oh, quick. Yeah, you can have your pillows as, like, the egg sacs. And just in the middle of the night, they'll just burst open. And you just get swallowed by it. <laughs> But, like, in a good way. So, I see a question here about earthquakes. Can I quickly touch upon that? Heck yes. That's a thing. Like, I go through about one or two earthquakes a month there. The first time I felt one, I was shocked. I was at work once, and all of a sudden, an earthquake was happening, and, like, the ceiling lights were shaking. The, like, everything was shaking. And I'm just like, yeah, typical day in Japan. No biggie. And, and like, 
Yeah. Like a radar, like everyone in Japan has these on, on their phone. It automatically will, uh, uh, earthquake warning, like everyone's phones are set up if you bought them in Japan to give you an earthquake warning at what level it is so you know to get the frig out of there. I wouldn't have a phone. It would happen. I'd probably be on the ground in the field position just crying. You get used to it. Like the first time I experienced it, I was about to cry because I didn't know. I was like, oh my God, is this like tsunami 2016 or like what's <laughs> going on guys and it was no they happen all the time but just where you're located yeah but even if it's okay like after the first time the first time i would still be on the ground crying yeah yeah it happens you, you get used to it though yeah like so earth, that's like apartments oh sorry apartments um when people look for apartments they have to make sure they're earthquake resistant like the one i'm getting is earthquake resistant so. Yeah, that's definitely something good to like let uh, travelers know for sure because like nobody really remembers that. It seems. Yeah, that's a good thing. So, on the topic of apartments, I'm curious, what are the main difference between like Japanese apartments and Western apartments? They're so tiny in Japan. Okay, thing. Um, a lot of them are very high tech though, like the newer ones. But um, usually, like some apartments have like the tatami mat, which is like a different kind of flooring, like a typical Japanese. Like old school apartment, like a house kind of thing. If you guys know what that is, like no, a, no, like explain. A, I don't really know how to explain it in English. Oh. It's like a straw kind of. It's not even straw. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, <sighs> yeah, it's like it's like a it's like a really tightly woven uh, straw mat. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So they've got floors of that. Um, also, bathrooms, toilet, and like shower are separate. Like if you get one together, it's usually not considered a good apartment. Because, like, people don't want their shower and their bath toilet in the same room for some reason. Also, um, th- usually they're sliding doors. They're not doors that open and close. They're, like, they slide open and closed. Um, and then as well as the size, they're smaller. There's no central heating, so you're gonna your house is going to freeze. Like, even though Japan's hot during the summer, with the air conditioning, it's fine. But during the winter, like, even though it doesn't get freezing cold, your house is going to like, get cooler and cooler and cooler. And then you're going to start freezing. Like, I remember coming home from work and staying in my jacket for, like, 15 minutes while I let the heater go on. Ooh. So a thing I've al- always been curious about with the Japan and apartments is in every show I've seen, somehow people on part-time salary can afford an apartment. Oh, yeah. Is that um, real? Just, if you get a really cheap apartment, like, the apartment I had was $800, um, roughly, Canadian Um between two of us, so four hundred dollars a month, which isn't that bad. I mean, especially. I mean, you said you were making like twenty dollars an hour at Hooters. Yeah. Uh, how many hours a week were you working? Um, legally, because I was on a student visa, I can only work twenty-eight. But I mean, that's still a pretty good job. I mean, uh, if I was working twenty-eight hours at you know at twenty bucks an hour, yeah, it'd be easy to rent an apartment. Exactly, yeah. and even then, like you Rob, get cheaper yeah. apartments. Like if you get a one-person apartment, or if you got two of you, like the cheaper it is. Like you, I found apartments for like three hundred dollars. They're just not very good locations. Like the closer to the station, the more expensive, the more convenient. Like the more grocery stores around the area. Like in Japan, it's just based on convenience. The more convenient the apartment, the expense more expensive. So if you don't mind, like the thirty-minute like. Train ride. Well, train ride to like, to work or school and like the 20 minute walk to the grocery store or to the station you're gonna get a really cheap apartment so if i decide to go there uh, that's, yeah. that's the smart thing we're gonna head to our next break here folks guys thank you so much for tuning in to 102.7 fm c-i-l-u or around the world l-u radio.ca we're your thunder geeks and we'll be right back and we're back of course you're listening to 102.7 fm c-i-l-u all around the world at l-u radio.ca that was jam project with the hero also known as the one punch man theme really what show is that one punch man yeah anytime i get an excuse to play that song i am going to over and over and over and over again well speaking of I- i'm waiting for you to go dog but, oh, gee, I, I'm expecting a name drop to come, so br- give it to me. What is it? Vic me derp derp. What? Vic me derp derp. Vic Mignogna. Ah, uh, you <laughs> haven't used him yet? No, look at the list. Dang. For those of you who haven't listened before, every week we try to go the entire episode without talking about anyone Rob has met. Because Rob has met every single celebrity on the planet and loves to tell us about it. Relentlessly. But have you met the Japanese one? Ooh. I, uh, the only Japanese one I met, and I did use him last time, so it's... N- uh, I've met the Japanese voice of Vegeta. Ooh. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, it's on the list. Let me double peek and reread it. Do you know who Vic Mignogna is playing on, on One Punch Man right I now? I don't watch English. Though. Sorry. That's fair. You don't need to. <laughs> show me. You can actually, get the original I've accomplished, context. I've accomplished the thing all anime fans want to do. They want to watch it without the subtitles. Yes. I could do that. For me, there's certain anime I can watch in dub, One Punch Man being a great example. I can watch that in dub, but things that are more action-focused, I find, I prefer the dub because I don't need the voice inflections. Um, The biggest one I couldn't, where I just 
regaled and repulsed by it was Love Live. I love I'm it so much. Ah. I love it no, so no. much. I love it so much, and I could not watch it in English because all of the voice inflections were gone and just the little verbal like quirks that made each girl unique. And like, nope, nope, no English. あのさ、ラブライブなら英語と日本語どっちでも込みです。<laughs> I, what I, like, what, what okay, wait, 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 I wanted to, what, what did you say? For Love Live, whether it's English、mm-hmm. or Japanese, they're both trash. No! no! <laughs> I hate you! Thank you! <laughs> I'm gonna go cry in the corner just because all of my hopes and dreams <laughs> rest on school idols. Wait, 20K16? Is that the word? <laughs> 2K, 2K16. 2K. <laughs> See, my problem is, is like when I'm watching something that's subbed, Like, if I go to another tab to like just kind of scroll because you know, like I have a short attention span, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I can't do that because I don't understand what they're saying. Oh no.、Uh, See, I think I've watched enough where I can get the just. Like, if you said something to me that's not like overly complex, I think I get the just of what you're saying. Yeah. Also, Th- the context as well. Like, if you throw something at me, I think I'll get like the just of your sentence. Ah.、Uh, don't worry. Japanese talking, I'll get it, right? Okay, okay. The first word was Japan. Right. Nihongo. Nihongo. Okay, okay. Nihongo. Right. Was in there. Right? Yeah. Okay. See, I'm getting bits and so, pieces. What I said was if I speak Japanese, you'll understand, right? See, I got Japan and right. Yeah. You got go. two words you out can pick of it. Up the, that's where you start, though. That's where you start. If you can pick up the words, eventually. But I, I've heard stories of like, people trying to do that, and then like, sometimes they'll completely think the wrong thing and like. I remember one of my favorite models that lived in Japan for a bit. Her name's Taylor. And she was talking to like, one of the producers or something like that. And he was asking about the Prime Minister, I guess, of Canada. But like, she thought, like, he said Justin, but she thought she was ta- he was talking about Justin Bieber. So she's like, Yeah, Justin Bieber. And he's like, Your Prime Minister is Justin Bieber? No, no, no. Justin Bieber's the Grand Wizard of Canada.、Oh、that is true. <laughs>、uh, Ah, I know you had some things that you must see needed to do in Japan. And I remember the first one was Otome Road. Yes! So, can you tell us what it is? Did you get there? Otome Road! Okay, so that is like a road known for girls. So, so you guys probably heard of Akihabara, which is like、yes. Otaku Central. But On the list. Ikibukuro is the girl version kind of thing. Otome Road is like the place with like all the boys love cafes. There's,、um, <gasps> there's your like, do- like the girls' yaoi shops and everything like that. There's like the, the butler cafes. And I, went to, I went to a boys love cafe twice. I have a member's card. The second time I went, they're like, oh, hey, you're that girl that was here last time. That girl that speaks really good Japanese. And I was like, oh my God, you remember me? And they're like, yeah, yeah. What was your name? Melanie? I was like, oh, no way. And like, they're really sweet because like, I don't eat meat. My friend didn't either. And then, like, my friend's cool with, like, picking meat out and stuff like that.、Mm-hmm. She, I, I'm vegan, but she's, like, vegetarian kind of thing. Yeah. So they literally, for her, they picked out every single piece of chicken from their、for、food.、Her. And she, they, they were so cute. And, like, okay, boys love cafes are the best thing in the world. And if I could afford it, I would go every day. <laughs> Not gonna lie. But yeah, it's essentially Otome Roto is a place for girls or guys who are interested in boys' love to go there and have fun. So, do you have a specific recommendation for a boys' love cafe? Because、yes. that's gonna go on Rob's list. Yes. Okay. It's, um,. Uh, I forget what it's called. It's like. Oh, jeez. Bo- so we're going to well, need to track down get, Mel. Can we get back? Just, can, can I'll, take, I'll take you if you ever go、yeah. one day. Oh, I'm working on it. So、I'm、essentially, it.、Um, boys dress up like school boys there. They have different like, levels of like, high school seniorship. So there's like the first year, second year. You get your, depending on how long you go, like, I'm a first year still because I haven't made my way up to second, third, or fourth year. Essentially, the guys will serve you, they'll talk to you like your friends and like your senpai, your kohai, so like the upperclassmen, lowerclassmen. And like they'll flirt together while they're talking. And like, for example, you can pay them to play the pocky game or like pay them,、uh, pay them to do. What's the pocky but, game? So, for example, I say it's like $7 for the pocky game. You buy the pocky, you guys can all eat it, but they take one piece. You pick a scenario. You pick the semi, the uke, so the top and the bottom. And then you pick a scenario. So my friend picked the scenario that they're childhood friends and one of them's in love with the other one and he confesses.、So、they reenact that for you. It's like a two, three minute sketch. And then at the very end, they finish it with the pocky. Like,、so、they put do they lady in the tramp it? And then they, they, they turn their heads so you can't really see because they're obviously not kissing because you don't actually know if they're gay or not. But like, that's not the point. The point isn't the sexualization of it, it's like the, the cute, like, wow, this is like. So cute. Like, wow.、Yeah. Like, doki doki. My kokoro is like, what is that in English? <laughs> like, my heart's like, flutter, flutter. You know, like, wow. That is a legit thing. And I took my friend Vic, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell everybody, Vic. I know you don't want people to know, but she was like super pumped. She's like, guys, because I love this place. And she's the one who picked that scenario, FYI. So, just Aww. saying. Aww. So, like, the Boys Love Cafe, is, is that a butler cafe or are those two different things? 
two different things. The Boys Love Cafe has got that scenario of, like, the boys love aspect. So, whereas the Butler Cafe is, like, you go there, they treat you like a princess. They treat you like a royalty. So, I've gone, I've not gone to a Butler Cafe yet, but I've gone to maid cafes. It's essentially the same thing, but flipped. So, they'll be like, um... They'd be like, welcome home, my like that princess or whatever. I'd be like, uh, madame, can I get you like a tea or a coffee? They treat you like completely with like the uttermost highest amount of respect they can. And they just talk with you and like they literally treat you like royalty. It's the best feeling in the world. So if there's a boys love, is there a ladies love cafe? Is there Yuri cafe? No, not that I know of. Oh. Um, there's things called Danso Cafe though. So that is essentially girls that dress up like boys and they serve Ooh. you. And that is also, I haven't yet to gone to one of those. But like I, because I, I was busy working all the time, right? And going to school, so. Is there the reverse where you have boys dressed up like girls? You know it. Okay, Rob, that's also going on the bucket list. <laughs> yes, but and oddly enough, there's like no Yuri cafes, so like, but like that's the closest I think you get. So. so we have an we have a market weekend enterprise in Japan. That's our road in. We're gonna open the first Yuri cafe. But girls and maid cafes act cutely enough together that it's kind of like you can picture it as Yuri. So. Aww, <laughs> dang. All right, and I know you said that your holy grail was Comicat. Okay, sad thing, guys. I didn't actually go to Comicat. The first time I got lost, I was like, I, me and my friend went, and like, she didn't make it on the train, and I was, the doors were closing. I'm like, no! And we didn't have phones! So I was like, I have to get off, and then she didn't know where I was getting off, so we ended up just walking home, like, got off the separate stations, went home, and then we, like, cried. Like, literally, I've seen, I've, I swear I've seen that in an anime where just the doors close, like, no, and just yep. you watch your dreams going and, like, away. Like, everyone was during Christmas, and I had to work because I was working. It was it, during so. Christmas? Well, like, like the Christmas Eve and stuff, so yeah, it's like, <laughs> couple holiday anime. <laughs> but I had to work. Like, unfortunately, I was in a lot of debt because, like, I've never lived on my own. Mm-hmm. I've never been to a foreign country by myself for the first time. And, like, I had to support myself. So I'm like, I'm going to take advantage, unfortunately. You know, like, as much as I love anime, you guys, like, to everyone out there, you have to put your responsibilities, responsibilities first. first. Yeah. Oh, okay. you're going back. So you're going to have so many more chances to go. I love yes. It. So you had quite a few people actually come visit you while you were in Japan. Yeah. What were the kind of things when they got there they wanted to see? So things like the typical like Tokyo Tower and like the Harajuku Shibuya, like the big crossing thing. I took them and all that. I've actually never been to Tokyo Tower still. But like there's a lot of things I still haven't done because I was busy working. I said working, going to school. Um, but like my friends, I took them everywhere. I took them to the clubs. I took them to the restaurants. I took them to vegan Japanese restaurants, which are friggin' amazing. I took them for sushi. Of course, you got to go to sushi. I took them for... Like, all these insane... Like, I took them for ramen. Like, I took them for every... Like, food is the staple in Japan. Like, you go out for food. Like, ramen is huge down there. Everyone eats ramen. So, uh, actually, based on the ramen thing, I was really curious. Like, how common are noodle carts? Very common. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't a complex question. I just want to know what are my odds of getting yeah, noodles. Yeah, Rob just wants to eat noodles from a noodle cart, and he just wants it to be every three feet from him. Is it, like, noodle it's, carts? Are they, like, hot dog stands, like, in New York yeah, sort of um, situation? Yeah, noodle stand where you can actually sit down. And, like, so they sell usually ramen and beer. That's all businessmen want to eat. They so. serve beer at the raw. Ra- oh, you can't buy beer anywhere. It's illegal. Honest. It's illegal to drink in public. So me and my friends, before going out, we'd go to the 7-Eleven, buy cans of beer, just walk around, and then go to karaoke after. That's beautiful yeah or like we'd secretly because they don't they pat down guys at the club but they don't pat down girls so i'd sneak like b- flasks in my shirt and i go in the club be like hey what it is <laughs> so when people came to visit you was there like one requested activity that like everyone seemed to ask or did everyone have different things they wanted to see <laughs> mostly the club not gonna lie <laughs> my friends are really into that but like it was a lot of it was shibuya everyone wants to see shibuya cross like it's in like all the animes all the games like i remember playing the world ends with you and seeing it i'm like i'm going one day and so like it's everywhere so everyone wants to see it they want to take that memorable photo of them being there so that's like the biggest thing i found was there something that you liked showing to people that they didn't know like something that you got to expose the the people you brought down to um, just like mostly like little like local bars and stuff I knew because I'm a fan of like even though I live in Tokyo I lived in a small section where like people knew me as a regular like I'd go to a bar or a restaurant be like hey like you're like, Mel yeah exactly and like you're like the norm of Tokyo yeah <laughs> no and like everywhere I went like like there was always certain places like they knew me as like but beside Hooters there was like a um, a sushi place and I went there a lot after work to get food before my train because I don't sometimes to wait and so they'd be like they, I was their regular so every time they came in they'd be like the usual because I usually get like I'm a vegan right so uh, Joanna's is oddly a lot of vegan sushi options there's like pickled vegetables there's like Ooh, natto yummy. there's um uh, avocado there's uh, cucumber there's like so many different options there's tofu like uh, uh, there's um uh, I forget what it's called oh my god 
But like, there's so many options. So every time I go there, they knew. And there was this one time a new guy was there, and I ordered. He's like, oh, "How do I type that in?" Because it was vegan, right? And they're like, "Don't worry about it. She's our regular Melanie. Like, she's she's got. We got this." I'm curious with food specifically because I'm always fascinated by Japanese versions of like uh, like American sort of snack foods. <laughs> Were there any that stuck out to you? Because I mean, I, like, I've always wanted to have a green tea Kit Kat. Um. <laughs> Yeah, the Kit Kats are insane. All my friends that go there, like I've had green tea Kit Kat in Thailand when my host family went to Japan on a vacation without me and they brought them back for me. So those were good back when I wasn't vegan and like um, a lot of their, like a lot of their chips, they got the weirdest flavors of things. Like anything could be any flavor. Like it's insane. Like they're, they had <coughs> Sakura flavored, like cherry blossom flavored Coke and like mm-hmm. they have like the weirdest things and like you just got to try them kind of thing, you know? I follow this uh, blogger uh, on Tumblr, and that's what he does. He's he lives in Japan, and he just blogs like all the strange food that's there and stuff like that. Oh, I don't remember what his name is. I'll get it to you after the show. But um, yeah, and I saw the Sakura flavor Pepsi, and I'm like, I need some, and I need it. So I'm curious if there was anything that you got to Japan, you were super excited, and then you're kind of like, oh, this kind of stinks. Oh man, there's not gonna lie, there's quite a few of those. Um, uh so something i was really excited to make like friends i consider my best friends like don't get me wrong i made a few but in japan it's really hard to like make a really close connection with someone because like in japan everyone's about like not burdening each other so here like your best friend's like don't worry man i got you back like no matter what no matter what situation you're in like you've always got that best friend whereas in japan if you like you can't do that so people as as close as they want to get to you they don't get that close to you so it's really hard to find someone you consider a best friend i was lucky i made friends with two japanese guys and a korean guy and I consider them my brothers. They're like my best friends ever. And like, they got my back. Oh, Nason. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, we usually just say Buddha. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, so like, I love them to death. But yeah. Also, can I just do a shout out? Yes, Today's 100%. My six month anniversary with my boyfriend. Aww, congratulations. <gasps> Thank you. Well, the 19th, so it's in Japan. But yeah. Yeah. But you can send him the link and he, you can wave to him. Wave to him. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. So this this question goes back a bit. So I know you really you hated high school here. Oh, yeah. Like you despised it. So when you went to Thailand, were you in high school there or was it a post secondary? It was high school. I did an additional year. When you go through Rotary, you have to do an extra year because I already graduated. They didn't require that. So they're just like it's a free year. It's a lap. It's a leap, lap year. Is that sure. What is that what it's called? I don't know. So yeah. Uh, I think they call it victory lap. That's now. it. That's it. Yeah. What were some of the differences going to high school there as opposed oh to here? Oh my god, it's it's so different. Like, ja- okay, Thai students, everyone takes turns in the class. Like, they get homework. Everyone takes turns doing the homework, and they all copy from that one person every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, depending if you go to, like, okay, the thing is in, Jap- in Thailand, the schools are like wealth levels. So if you go to a regular school, they put you in classes based on your smarts. So if you're in like level six, you're the smartest students in the school. The teachers will focus on you. Unfortunately, the lower level you are, the teachers. So I've had teachers like not show up to class. I was put in the regular level yeah. because like they're I'm a foreigner, so they're like we don't want to like do this with your grades. So we're just gonna throw you in a level that's easy enough for you, but like kind of a struggle. So you were kind of like in the inner city school version of yeah. a Thai school, and then like oh. students would skip all the time like they wouldn't go to class like kids just no one takes school seriously so like unfortunately as much as i love thailand i would never raise a kid in thailand it doesn't sound too different than some of the stuff you see here though like i mean that that's i know that's one thing that's common you have the one smart kid do all the homework and then it's like okay five bucks and you get your paper out you know here you go but this is the thing like this is a common thing it wasn't like pay like it wasn't the smart kid doing yeah. it everyone just took turns, took doing turns. It. Yeah. everyone just worked together did she exactly so like whenever they had english homework they're like melanie and like i know for a fact as an exchange student you can slack as like a lot more which is uh, bad. I would want to say that in case any of my Rotary Youth Exchange officers are watching. I did not skip class all the time. No, you were, of course, were the model student and the best and one I in the class. And I didn't sleep in the library watching anime and playing dramatical murder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so from my understanding here, when you're going back to Japan this time, you're actually trying to get into a university. So the thing for that, Japanese universities are really hard to get into. You have to be really smart, and I'm not particularly smart. So I'm studying for the SAT. Bull honky. I'm, okay, listen. So, <laughs> so I am studying for the SAT. You have to take a standardized test for university entrance exams there because I'm not taking an entrance exam. And I'm not particularly good at math, and I'm not very good at school. I'm not very good at the study aspect. I'm better at immersing and learning that way. Like, you throw me into a job or, like, a serving job, I picked up serving like that. Like, I'm really good at it now. So if I practice at something, I'm good at it, whereas, like, 
like um the idea of studying something that I don't know from scratch is really difficult for me so I'm struggling with school like with that studying right now and I'm worried I'm not going to do well because if I don't get a good mark on this exam I'm not going to have a a higher chance to get into the university programs I want so what's the difference between schooling say when you were in Japan last year versus what you're going into so what I'm doing what I was in Japan for was just language so I was just learning Japanese language and it was just like a regular classroom almost like high school there was four three to four hour classes and that's about it whereas university this term is like a regular university the thing is it's different than a Japanese university because well it's, a, it's the same university but I'm in it going through it a foreigner program so it's all taught in English mm-hmm. there's Japanese language programs to learn Japanese thing is I'm as comfortable I am in Japanese like I'm like perfectly confident in speaking like I said I work down there my boyfriend doesn't speak that much English um so but to go to university and study every single day in Japanese I feel like what's stressing me out with working on top of that because just yeah. working was really hard for me so like as much as I get good at it really fast like it just it's hard what are some of the courses you're hoping to do when you're in university so I'm applying to a few different courses to Tokyo University Waseda and Temple they're all kind of like international based programs to learn Japanese language culture a lot of international stuff really so that kind of thing I just like I said my main focus is trying to get into translating and stuff and kind of I kind of want to go a little bit into humanitarian stuff but we'll see how that goes so one game we've been loving to play with our guests here uh, that Rob's introduced us to, it's called Million Dollars Butt. And the idea of the game here is we're each going to give you a set of cards here, and you've got to judge which is the one you're least likely to do. So it's a million dollars, but this condition. Oh. So seeing as everyone's still prepping, I shall go first with my scenario. So Mel, just read it off to us. Million dollars? <laughs> no. Yes, no. yes, yes. Million dollars, but... Uh, should I say it in Japanese? <laughs> no. no, no, we, want, okay. we need English. Million dollars, but whenever you see a dog wag its tail, your genitals and nose switch places for 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, I'm going to give you mine here. I'm not doing uh, this, this one, I think you're going to run into a lot when you're in Japan. Million dollars, but whenever you are the tallest or shortest person in the room, you barf in your mouth. Yeah, so anytime you're the tallest person in Japan, you just... <laughs> okay. Million dollars, but whenever someone beats you, your pants turn into inappropriately short shorts. I feel like that's the I, that might be I wear inappropriately short, short shorts. <laughs> exactly. So like that's like that's no more of like deal. a magical girl transformation. You're just like, yeah. bam! Look at my short short. Mm. My whole short short. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Million dollars, but whenever someone starts talking politics, you swap places with a can- car- carny, carny, a carny. Yeah, someone who works at a carnival, like the people who do the carnival games. Yeah, they got like three ah, teams. So like three their name's Joe, and <laughs> so is their dad, and their dad's dad, and their dad's dad's dad. <laughs> oh, speaking of carnies. Wait, no, oh, no, no. Wait until after, yeah. Can you do it? So I pick? Yeah, so which one would you never do? Never? Never. Like, absolutely not even for a billion. <laughs> Woot. Nose, nose, uh, pants. And Your yeah, genitals. Right. Yeah, that might be an awkward situation. Oh, a puppy. Oh, God, no. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't know Melanie was a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, I want to thank you so much for having you here. You've been absolutely amazing. Uh, tell people where they can find your cosplay. Okay, so I have a Facebook page, um, a World Cosplay account as well. You can find me on there under Siome Cosplay and uh, S I Y O M E. Um, I've been busy with a lot of stuff, so I don't cosplay as much, but I did do a couple of cosplay things at photo shoots in Japan. Uh, so you can find me there and message me on that and like hit me up. Like, I'm so cool with meeting new people and talking to people all the time, regardless if it's about traveling, about anime, cosplay, or school, like whatever it is, like stress. Even if you want to just like have someone to yell at about stress, I'm there because I know I've, I've been there. I'm still there. So. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in once again. Of course, you're listening to Thunder Geeks. And if you want to continue the conversation, you can do so online on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak, where we'll continue streaming after the show. Or follow us on our other social media on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, or Tumblr, at thundergeeks. Want to send some emails, some fan mail, some erotic fan fiction? Do so to our email, thundergeeks at luradio.ca. Our final song here is going to be Debs and Arrow, I Wish Totoro Was My Neighbor. Of course, tune in next week, as always, 10.30 p.m. to 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, or around the world at luradio.ca. We're your Thunder Geeks. We'll see you next week.